Okay, welcome everyone. So now uh, I'm Rodi Chia. So this is on the topic of inventory control. This is applicable to students taking management accounting at uh, diploma level, such as those students taking the CAT and as well as those taking the ACCA. Now, this topic which I'm covering is quite simple, right? It's just a brief summary of what you need to know on this topic of inventory control, right? So our scope today is that we're going to look at what is the concept of inventory control, followed by, you know, uh, a very commonly taught uh, method of inventory control, which is EOQ, which is also better known as the economic order quantity, right? There is the other method, which is economic batch quantity, but we will not be covering that in the video. However, if you're interested, you can drop me a mail to, you know, discuss more about this. Right. Finally, we end off by discussing about the concept of just-in-time inventory system. Right. So, let's begin with the very first stop point. What is the concept of inventory control? Why is inventory control important? Now, inventory control is particularly important to certain businesses such as trading businesses, as well as those... Uh, particularly in retail, pharmacy, and well then you have the other such as um, automotive, repairs. Now why is it so important for businesses such as these to manage inventory, right, or control inventory? Because when we talk about inventory, it is important that whatever that is ordered can later on be sold, right? Because if you're going to order something that you can't sell, then that will result in a situation where working capital is tied up in inventory. So, inventory order has to be sufficient. It has to be enough to fulfill customer orders, right? Remember, not having enough stocks will result in certain problems such as you are not able to fulfill customer orders, customers go away, and they don't come back. Right? So, from the point of view of the business owner, what are the concerns about stock ordering? The first important concern is excessive stocks. Excessive stocks means that you have more than what is necessary to fulfill your customer orders. Now, excessive stocks is not a very good thing to have because it results in very high risk of obsolescence, right? That is particularly particularly the case for electronic goods such as TVs, handphones, computers, right? And it is also similarly quite important to businesses that are, you know, buying and selling food, especially vegetables, poultry products. Now those sort of products also can't be kept for long because the more you keep, it also means that you also run higher risk of spoilage, which is not desirable as well. Now what about having too little? Too little isn't good. As mentioned earlier on, if you have too little stocks, or in other words, insufficient stocks, it results in very high opportunity costs. Why? Because customer orders can't be fulfilled. Customers become dissatisfied, they go elsewhere, they do not come back to patronize the business ever again. Now, then how do we manage all these issues? One is to ensure that the orders are sufficient. Right? Order enough, but not excessive or too little. Right? And how do we achieve that state of ordering enough? That's where forecasts are key. Because with an accurate forecast, with a very um, detailed, precise forecast on sales, then orders can be precise. Orders can be made such that there is enough stocks and it's unlikely that you have stock excesses or stock shortages. So, one of those methods that help us to determine the quantity to order, right, such that we avoid situations of shortages or excessive stocks, is the EOQ. Now, EOQ is commonly taught in many textbooks, right, and it's based on a very key formula. Right, this formula is as follows. Order quantity is equal to the square root of 
2 multiplied by CO multiplied by D over CH. CO which is referring to cost of order. D refers to the annual demand. CH refers to the cost of holding a unit per annum or per year. Now, by using the EOQ, we not only minimize the risk of stock shortages, we also minimize the risk of stock surpluses. Right? It also helps to reduce the number of times you need to place orders with suppliers. Remember, when you have too little stocks, what happens is that you have to order more often from your supplier. And why is it that you have to order more often from your supplier? Because when you have small order sizes, you cannot help but order more often to replenish your stocks. On the other hand, when you have large order sizes, order costs actually come down. Because when you have large order sizes, it means that you always have more stocks on hand. Right? In each shipment or in each truck, uh, truck load. So there is an inverse relationship between the order costs per annum and order size. When you have when you're ordering in big sizes, then that will definitely reduce the overall order costs. Right? So EOQ helps to minimize, not eliminate, it helps to minimize order costs. Now at the same time EOQ helps to, by following the EOQ formula to determine that order quantity, ordering based on that order quantity as a result of this formula will then help us to minimize the other very major cost of having stocks, that is holding costs. Now when you have more stocks, What's the problem? The more stocks you have, the greater your holding cost. Right? Do not forget that when you place greater order sizes, holding costs will inevitably increase. Because with big order sizes, it means that you need to have bigger warehouses and even bigger warehouses to store all your inventory. And when we have bigger places to store your inventory, it means that you have to incur more rental costs more insurance costs and more costs to you know uh, look after the inventory such as security All right so the EOQ is quite amazing theoretically because it helps to minimize order costs as well as holding costs and not only that avoid stock shortage and stock excess now this model works on very simplistic and broad assumptions and one of which is that you have predictable demand. And that is unfortunately not true. Because in reality, demand fluctuates according to season, it fluctuates according to consumer trend, it may fluctuate for all kinds of reasons. Right. The second assumption, right, not the last, is that the cost of holding and the cost of order are assumed to be constant. Well, of course, we all know that these are unlikely to be true because cost of holding do fluctuate because rental costs are always increasing, if not declining, for all kinds of reasons. The same for other costs. Right. Of course, there are some other assumptions that we also make, but generally, these two are the very key assumptions made in the EOQ model. Right, so talk about inventory exactly is it applied? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a very simple example to demonstrate how we apply the EOQ model. Right, in this simple example, it says here that Z company wishes to procure 1,000 units of material X in a year. Order cost is ten dollars per order and then holding costs two dollars per unit for one year right what is the EOQ so following the formula I gave you just now order size or order quantity equals to the square root of 2 multiplied by the CO which is ten dollars in this case multiplied by 1000 which is the demand for a year, that's very important, for a year, divide by CH which is the holding cost 
for a year, right? Of course, you know that the CH is two dollars, right? Input all this into the calculator, and then let's see what is it. So this gives us a hundred. Okay, by chance it was a hundred. Right? You shouldn't have a hundred uh, round number normally. Right? So this tells us that in order to achieve uh, the state of being able to minimize order costs and holding costs, you should order a hundred units each time, or place uh, order sizes of 100 each time, that's the EOQ. Now, then how do we know what's the holding cost for a year? Now, one of those formulas that you can use to determine holding cost is to take Q divided by 2 multiplied by CH. Now this formula is very simplistic because it assumes that there is an average level of stocks, and this average level of stocks is based on order size which is 100 divided by 2 multiplied by the CH okay so this tells you what is the holding cost for a year happen that they are the same right but you shouldn't have the same figure in you know in actual exam question okay stock order cost for a year now this is calculated by taking the quantity Q not quantity apologies the demand divided by Q, the quantity, and then based on this, multiply by CO. Basically what this fraction does is that it helps to determine the number of orders per year, right, multiply by CO. So how it works is 1000 is the order or the required quantity in the year, divided by the Q, which is the order size, which is in our case 100, multiply by CO which is 10 right after you simplify is about a hundred dollars right so this is uh, how you apply the formula of EOQ right and by knowing the order size is possible to determine the stock holding cost but bear in mind that this isn't a very perfect formula if you have fluctuating uh, stocks in hand Right, because if you have fluctuating stocks in hand, then it is possible that your average stocks may be something else, right? Quite likely, which is where you might not be able to take Q divided by two for any kind of business, right? And now the stock order cost, stock order cost, right? Is now this formula is. A very simplistic formula. It assumes that there is only one order cost throughout the year, right? Okay, but in any case, so these are the three simple formulas that we normally use when we talk about uh, stock or inventory control. Now, what's the problem with EOQ? EOQ is able to produce that certain uh, order size such that by the business ordering that on based on that certain order size is able to minimize the holding cost of the stocks, order costs you know, for the stocks. It also helps to minimize the risk of running out of stocks, minimize the risk of having too much stocks. On the other hand, it has certain criticisms. The criticisms are, it fails to recognize the fact that inventory requirements do fluctuate throughout the year. Right? You might be able to predict for the whole year, but the thing is that from month to month, Order uh, requirements or inventory requirements will fluctuate because of the seasons of the year, right? Such as holiday and and uh, off peak seasons. So those would affect the amount of inventory required from month to month, right? Changes in production requirement, which is not uncommon, especially in a factory where there are different product lines being produced and there are always new products being put, uh, put into the production line and being produced so these will tend to affect the production requirements like how many of a unit to order how many of that type of good to order how many of these to order so the requirements are very likely to be changing especially in the modern factory where production is not just on one type of product but many types of product changes in customer requirements now it's very difficult to tell customers that 
hey, I don't make what you ask me to make, right? Customer requirements are constantly changing, right? Customer re may require for orders to be in this size, but they may request it in, to be in this size with whatever other add-ons or customization. So that can't be avoided. Now, the next thing is that EOQ fails to consider that holding costs and order costs do fluctuate, as I mentioned just now. This may not cons remain constant throughout the financial year. And EOQ, however, doesn't really consider the non-financial considerations. Right. The fact is that when you place an order, you have to consider about the relationship with the suppliers. In some cases, suppliers may even be offering bulk discounts to sweeten the deal. Right. And what do you do? Do you order based on EOQ or do you want to order based on a much larger quantity to enjoy that bulk discount? Right. So it's a bit uh, tricky. Right. So the EOQ isn't a you know one solution for all problems kind of formula. So when we place the inventory orders, it's still very important to go back to look at what other considerations. Right. They are still relevant, but they are not. Uh, what you call that? They are not measurable in monetary terms. Okay. So just in time is a very commonly taught topic, and we've just covered that. Now let's look at the other commonly taught inventory management system. That's the just in time inventory system. The just in time inventory system is a very uh, interesting system. It started back in the fifties or even earlier, right? In many textbooks, just-in-time tended to be related to the Japanese automotive manufacturers. And how does just-in-time inventory system actually work? What does it actually do? It aims to overcome the problems with inventory holding, inventory holding courses. Now, if you remember back in the old days when there was a Ford Motor Company, right? There was the assembly line production style, you know, where you know goods are mass produced. Right. It wasn't about what the customer wants to buy, but about what the factory wants to make. Right. That resulted in large amounts of inventory being held on hand. And when you have large amounts of inventory being held on hand, it means that inevitably the business will incur more holding costs. So what just-in-time inventory system aims to do is that it aims to reduce inventory holding or even eliminate inventory holding. So by doing so, and it does so at every stage of production. By doing so, it's able to reduce or eliminate holding costs completely. Now remember, when you can remove inventory holding costs, that results in better profitability. And through the just-in-time system, there is a continuous flow of inventory throughout the production process. So, there is a lot of efficiency. Now this system is very different from the traditional um, you know, philosophy of manufacturing where goods are just mass produced. There is no consideration about whether there is demand. Right? In the old days, the production systems were based on a pool system, whereas the just-in-time system is a pool system. Production is scheduled, planned, according to customer demand, which means that only when there is an order, then there is production, at least in the case of Japanese automotive manufacturers. Now the just-in-time system doesn't work for all businesses. right? For it to work, there are certain criteria and conditions to be fulfilled, one of which is the guaranteed quality of the goods ordered. right? Suppliers must be in close proximity. There is no point in having a factory in, let's say, Japan, but your supplier is somewhere in the middle of Russia. Right? So proximity plays a very important part because when you have just-in-time system, it means that there has to be frequent orders as and when required so that the production processes can take place and ensure that the goods get produced uninterrupted. Good relationship matters because through the good relationship with the suppliers, then orders can be assured and can be assured that these will arrive on time within that maybe that uh, expected lead time. Flexible force matters as well. Right and efficient production systems, 
If you have too much inefficiency, the just-in-time system may also not be too appropriate to implement. Right? So, obviously, as I mentioned just now, without certain conditions being fulfilled, the just-in-time system will not be appropriate to implement. So, certain reasons why just-in-time wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't be applicable for some businesses, one is that there isn't uh, any reliable suppliers. Right? The lack of reliable suppliers is, what stop is the thing that stops some business from moving to just-in-time. Poor relationship is another issue. A lack of trust would also affect uh, the chances of implementing a just-in-time inventory system, right? as well as inefficiency. <coughs> so inventory planning is a very key part in any business, right? at least for businesses which carry inventory. If it's managed properly, it could help to minimize order and holding costs. Right. Of course, this ultimately leads to better profitability of the business. Right. And it helps to, of course, avoid situations of shortages and also excess stocks. Right. So both situations, if you can avoid, it means that uh, your business will do fine right? and it will be probably more profitable. Now, there are various methods and approaches to inventory control. And the commonly used ones, or commonly taught even, are just in time, and EOQ. There is also the EBQ, which is economic batch quantity, and some other methods that may be used for inventory control. Right. And in any case, whichever method that you use, the main objective of these methods is ultimately to ensure that there is ample stocks, while avoiding situations of shortages and surpluses. Good inventory control system is very essential to ensure that there is ample stocks and avoid situations where you hold stocks for too long. Right? Okay. So we have covered the two inventory systems, but of course there are others. But if you are interested to know about the others, you can write in. Right? We can discuss more. Right? I hope that you have uh, learned something from this video. Right? Thank you for watching, and I will, you know, catch up with you soon.